Well, now on BBC Radio 4, Gary Richardson with this week's Look Away Now, the show that mixes sport and comedy. A bit like Cricket World Cup umpires. If you don't want to know the scores, look away now. now. Hello, I'm uh, Gary Richardson. Welcome to Look Away Now, the show that attempts to blend sport, comedy, interviews and breaking news. And that quadruple is still on. We're coming to you live from the Cricketers, where in tribute to the Cricket World Cup, we're recording in near total darkness. (laughs) Well, now in a moment, I'll be talking exclusively to Sir Alex Ferguson about events in Milan this week. But let's quickly address the extraordinary resignation of the Bolton Wanderers manager, Sam Allardyce. His assistant, Sammy Lee, takes over. And with Big Sam being replaced by Little Sam, the rest of Bolton's coaching staff now move up a place. The new first team coach will be even Littler Sam. (laughs) Minuscule Sam takes over the reserves, and youth development will now be headed by, perhaps surprisingly, Fireman Sam. (laughs) Well, Allardyce has been linked with an extraordinary string of high-profile positions. To try to separate truth from fiction, I'm joined by our correspondent, Dave Lamb. So, Dave, is Allardyce really in the running for any of these jobs? Well, he he most certainly is, Gary. I've just been told that the former Thai Prime Minister, Taksin Shinawatra, who looks set to become the new owner at Manchester City, his manager of choice would be none other than Sam Allardyce. Where's this information coming from, Dave? Well, the man I spoke to described himself as someone very close to the former Thai PM, and definitely not just Sam Allardyce putting on a foreign accent. Mm. (laughs) Right, are you sure? sure about this source of yours? Well, he sounded Thai in a sort of Lancastrian sort of way. <laughs> and, you know, this story gets even more interesting, Gary, because at the end of our conversation, the Thai gentleman then passed the phone to another spokesman who said, in what he assured me was a Geordie accent, that Newcastle United would also love Sam Allardyce to manage them. Mm, I see. He then passed the phone to yet another spokesman who assured me that Real Madrid want Allardyce too. Mm, this one was Spanish, was he? Well, to be honest, he sounded more Mexican. <laughs> Except for the odd sentence where he went a bit Pakistani. But, <laughs> but then, Real are a cosmopolitan club. So, uh, Allardyce, clearly a man much in demand. I don't think we've heard the last of this story, Gary. No, I think you might be right. Dave, thank you very much. And Greg Rusedski comes out onto centre court here. Ah, uh, no, he's realised he's retired and he walks hastily back in. <laughs> Well, we were due to phone uh, Sir Alex Ferguson in a few moments, but it, uh, it seems he's called us. Uh, hello, Sir Alex. Thank you very much indeed for calling us. Sir, it is true. You are phoning other managers behind my back? <laughs> Why you phone Ferguson? What's he got that I haven't got? Well, a chance of winning uh, the Premiership for a start. Very nice. <laughs> you sail very close to win with comments like that, Gary. <laughs> Jose, Sir Alex hasn't spoken to the BBC for ages. Shut up. And- you don't need him. He can only talk about football, 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 horses, 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 red wine, red wine, red wine. And what it's like living with a big mess of purple nose. Oh, well, seeing as you're here, Josie, what's your reaction to the Liverpool match? As I said, in first leg, I think we were best team. In second leg, we were best team in first half, in second half, in extra time, and in penalties. And that is why we won. <laughs> But you didn't win, you lost. Listen, the only team trying to win this match was team in blue. I could see this as clearly as I see big blue London bus passing my windows right now. (laughs) So you're out of the Champions League and with the Premiership seemingly heading uh, to Old Trafford... Gary, 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 Gary? Uh, I'm still here, Jose. Why talk about Premiership or Champions League when you could be talking about the big one? The big one? The Carling Cup? <laughs> well, what about your plans for next season then, Jose? Tell no, us. No, 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 no more football, Gary. I'm not phone up to talk about football. Uh, this is big scoop for Richards and Gary. You will listen. I leave Chelsea now, it looks like, maybe, because big boss not understand about importance of Carling Cup. But this presents problem. No other manager in world as good as me. Yes. Well, well I. So we have competition to find manager who is most like me. Instead of finding next Joseph, we find next Jose. <laughs> it's called Jose and his grey and colour raincoat. 
I pump my fist, slide down the touch line on my knees. Drink a glass of red wine, whoa, whoa, cause we want three, two. <laughs> and at the end, I say, sorry, whoever, but you are not Jose. Well, you like musical theatre, obviously. Of course. I used to think it was for homosexuals. <laughs> but one of my players, I can't say which, has got me into it. I like, especially... Um, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins is fantastic. Mary Poppins, I think, is similar to me. She arrives in place where everything is mess, and she sorts it all out. But people in charge not appreciate her, so she leaves. And she takes Robin and Lampard with her. Well, we, we have to leave it there, Josie. Thank you for joining us. Just quickly, where next for you if you do leave Chelsea? As Joseph Dreamcoat say, any team will do. <laughs> Ilyanovic already with a 9.4 on the vault. Let's see what he can do on the rings. And that is incredible. He's joined the rings together. I've no idea how he did that. <laughs> Now, Look Away Now is a sports show, so naturally, alongside me in the studio, I have a panel of ex-professional footballers watching television monitors. Uh, previously, we've had them keeping tabs on the evening's films, but the intellectual strain was proving too much, so this week they're watching cartoons. Uh, the former Oldham Athletic Manager, Stan Allen, is the, uh, the first of our pundits, and he's watching Scooby-Doo. Right, Gary, and it's an unchanged line-up here, fielded by Hannah Barbera. And, uh, <laughs> would have thought we'd ever see a lady in charge of a cartoon, incidentally, but uh, <coughs> the mystery machine the mystery machine's got Daphne and Fred up front, with the lad Fred wearing some sort of neck scarf. I'm surprised the fourth officials let him get away with that. Uh, in behind them comes the familiar orange jumper and glasses of Velma. Will she be affected by persistent tabloid rumours about her personal life? <coughs> and, uh, finally, right at the very back, it's the old partnership of Shaggy and Scoobert. Scooby to his friends. <laughs> Do. Uh, good, good communication is vital between these two, Gary, and it's easier said than done, because as far as I can make out from the early skirmishes, the lad Do hardly speaks a word of English. I mean, <laughs> if anyone could tell me what ruby knacks are, for example, I'd be very grateful. Uh, Stan, thank you very much indeed. Now, just to, um, just to keep you up to date with some of the other cartoons being shown tonight, uh, qualifying's just finished over at Wacky Races, and I can tell you a surprise here. Uh, it's the Ant Hill mob on pole, uh, <laughs> while hot favourite Dick Dastardly and Muttley will start from the pit lane, uh, we're hearing, after pointlessly trying to cheat whilst uh, being miles in the lead. <laughs> And now the former Motherwell and Tranmere midfielder, Andy McMahon, is watching Roadrunner. Andy? Aye, well, this should be a formality for the Roadrunner, Gary. Him and Wiley Coyote have now met 80 times, and 80 times old Meep Meeps come out on top. <laughs> We're a few minutes in here, in fact, and it's already taken a battering because... Oh, no way! No <laughs> bloody way! Oh, this is unbelievable, Gary. Wiley Coyote must have fallen a thousand feet off a cliff just now. <laughs> He'd have been praying there was a trampoline waiting for him at the bottom, but the wee puff of smoke told us he'd hit that deck and he'd hit it hard. And, you know, I'm thinking, th 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> but I'm looking at him now, Gary, and he's back on his feet. I, I tell you what, that is the best comeback I've seen since Tom swallowed Jerry's ironing board, and instead of rolling round on the ground, he spat it out and got on with it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, we also have ex Walsall defender Brian Brown. Uh, Brian, what are you watching? Uh, Watership Down, Gary. Uh, <laughs> which I sort of assumed would be a Navy based sequel to Black Hawk Down. Uh, <laughs> I love a bit of Guns and War Me, but uh, turns out it's about badly animated rabbits. Uh, <laughs> We're underway here. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. You'll be keeping us up to date with those cartoons throughout the evening, of course. Well, finally, long after we'd all had enough, the Cricket World Cup ended last week and few mourned its passing. Here at Look Away Now, we thought we'd take uh, a look back at the magic moments. Failing that, any moments. The Cricket World Cup 2007. Brills, spills and cricket. Oh, the fans are going wild here. Absolutely wild. All seven of them. <laughs> England's electrifying World Cup performance. Oh, in England, going well here. Oh, no! Disaster! They've lost seven wickets in one ball! Incredible! Oh, and that's it. England are out of the World Cup. Thank God! An end to the pain. Ian Bell's in tears. Good! 
Who could forget Bermuda and their gigantic left arm spinner, Big Dwayne Leverock? Ah, uh, he's Nick Dent and Leverock's got him! Oh, and he's hit the ground hard there. I shouldn't be surprised if that reverberates around the whole world and in a few weeks causes an earthquake somewhere unlikely like Foxton. <laughs> For some spectators, there was only joy. Yeah, we, uh, we met at England-Canada in the first week. And by the time of West Indies Island, we were married. Yeah, when the Super 8 started, Julie was pregnant. And by the time of the semi-finals, the kids were off to uni. University. <laughs> and we missed the final because that was the same day as our silver wedding anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> and the final where the umpire's control was complete. Uh, yeah, guys, it's third umpire Rudy Kirsten here. I know you can't see me, but it is me. Uh, now, I've checked the rules, and it's not over until the full 90 minutes have been played. No, sorry, that's football. Hang on. Okay, no, I do it. Ah, no, it's not over yet. It's first at 21. No, that's table tennis. And then, okay. Ah, has anyone got yet got the name of the murderer, the weapon used, and the place it was done? <laughs> You're right, that is clued out. Uh, no, just come back tomorrow and we'll sort it out there. Oh, no, no. Ah, has anyone said Yahtzee yet? Thanks, Yahtzee. What game is this? Well, now, uh, I gather our correspondent Dave Lamb has some breaking news for us. Uh, Dave, it's uh, about who's going to be the next Prime Minister, I think. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely right, Gary. Yes, for many years now, we've all been assuming it'll be Gordon Brown, but I've literally... Just this second been told that, sensationally, a new favourite has emerged. Yeah, who's that? Sam Allardyce. <laughs> Well, this week there was yet another report into childhood obesity and how it should be tackled. Eating less and moving around more would seem the obvious solution. <laughs> but how do we encourage the young to get going? Our regular music reporter, Richie Webb, thinks he has the solution. Hello, Richie. What is it? Well, Gary, I thought the best way to turn fat kids onto sport is to team up with some of my good friends from the world of pop music and get them to make doing sport sound cool. No, well, that's a massive ask, not least because you have no friends in the world of pop music. Yeah. Um, t tell me more. Well, what we need is someone who can make sports like cricket sound more fun than they actually are. Uh, someone like recent uh, pop sensation Mika. My life was so boring. I needed something new. So I tried a little cricket. Mm, there's so many things you can do. <laughs> I can be batsman, I can be fielder, long off or long on. I can be bowler, I can be upper, I can be anything I want. I can be fine leg, I can be square leg, or slip three, two, one. I can be fun man, I can be gully, or silly Megan. <laughs> Uh, but, 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 I mean, Richie, what about the hardcore obese, the, yeah. the really fat kids, yeah. the bloody gigantic yeah. ones? <laughs> well, I mean, I've got that covered as well, Gary. Angling. Uh, Angling. Gets the kids out of the house, gives them an interest, plus, and this is an added incentive to the obese, they can eat the fish. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a terribly uncool sport, isn't it? So, get the coolest band around to do a song about it. Uh, uh, to pow back together? <laughs> No, Gary, um, I'm saying let's get the Arctic monkeys to promote angling. I can't wait for the weekend, I swear to God. I'm wishing for some fishing, just pass me rod. Cos with me missus I am constantly wrangling to get some free time to fit in a spot of angling. <laughs> Cause the internet made us, but I prefer waders I'm standing on a riverbank from early till late It suits me fine to cast me line And chat about different varieties of bait Well, now it's high time we check back in with our uh, featured cartoons this evening. No, Let's no, get another. No, oh, no, this is a disaster. It sounds oh, no. like uh, things have taken a turn for the worse at Scooby Doo, Stan. You can say that again, Gary. Scrappy Doo's just turned up. Oh, <laughs> what an irritating little git. <laughs> <laughs> Scrappy Doo, Gary, he is the Robbie Savage of cartoons. <laughs> Puppy Power 
The only power this poppy's got, Gary, is the power to annoy the tits off people. <laughs> Stan, sit down. Now, has this cartoon come to life oh, yet? Oh, sorry, Gary. It's not really for me, Gary. There's been a bit of action in the abandoned fairground area, and uh, uh, actually, as I'm just talking to you now, Gary, the gang's just bumped into old man Withers, the janitor, who seems to be cutting holes in a bedsheet for some reason. I don't think that will prove significant in the end, though. <laughs> now, we've got reports in from Thundercats, and yes... Thundercats are on the move. <laughs> Thundercats are loose. Henman serves, and that seems to hit Nalbandian in the throat, causing him some discomfort. Well, nice to see someone else choking for once. <laughs> Well, now I'm hearing there's been a dramatic development in regard to the Cricket World Cup final. Our correspondent, Lawrence Howarth, is here. Lawrence, what's happened? Uh, Gary, my understanding is that ICC officials, having checked the rulebook once again, have just discovered that the 2007 Cricket World Cup final has technically still not finished. Uh, Apparently there is one over left. This is going to be a problem, surely, with the teams having scattered to various parts of the globe. Absolutely. Uh, And that's why I'm hearing that the plan is for the Australian bowler, Glenn McGrath, to text the over to Chaminda Vars. (laughs) Now, the texts themselves are going to be forwarded to my mobile, Gary, so any second now we should be getting the text. There it is. Yeah, OK. And here's the first delivery from McGrath. He's texted a back-of-a-length delivery just outside the off stuns. Stuns? Yeah, he probably means stump. Uh, Glenn McGrath does famously suffer from predictive text problems. (laughs) Vars has texted back a late cut with late there being spelled L and then the number eight, Gary. Um... (laughs) To third man for four, smiley face. Uh, OK, Lawrence, uh, so you're going to keep an eye on that text message over for us. Well, time now to continue our look at aspects of Englishness with the man who's more English than a cucumber sandwich on a summer's day. It is, of course, Kevin Flag of St George Peterson. <laughs> for I am an English gentleman, my name is Kevin Peterson. Ha! Kevin Peterson here. This week has been awesome. I have been exploring Radio 4 and have had the marvellous opportunity to appear in many of its exciting programmes. I made a guest appearance in The Arches. Hey up! There is good news and there is bad news. The bad news is that your cow is dead. The good news is that my 4x4 has remained unharmed. How was that? Can I go now? And I was on, I'm sorry, I have not got a clue. On that, there was this brilliant game that I totally loved. The rules were very simple, and it was unbelievably easy to play. Not in your game. Shepherd's Bush. Archway. Shepherd's Bush. Shepherd's Bush. Shep- <laughs> Hello? Shepherd's Bush. That's what I've been <laughs> saying! Ah, <laughs> oh, what a week. I love Radio 4. Over and out. Some showbiz news now, a bit of a departure this for Look Away Now, but if you've been following ITV's Greece is the World, you'll want to hear about this. Uh, news is reaching us that the show's judges have now made their final casting decision. Dave Lamb, uh, who's it going to be? Sam Allardyce, Gary. <laughs> All right, so Sam Allardyce is going to be the new Danny in Greece. Uh, that's right, and the new Sandy as well. He's playing both parts. Uh, apparently no one else will do. Sam Allardyce is the one that they want. <laughs> well, now I gather uh, texts are still being exchanged at the Cricket World Cup final, so uh, much action since we were last with you, Lawrence. Well, it's been tight stuff for McGrath, Gary. He's delivered a series of comma balls. Yeah, by which he meant dot balls, presumably. I think he probably did, yeah. Um, <laughs> the fourth ball of the over was interesting because it seemed McGrath was trying a bit of disguise by sending it in the form of a free handset upgrade offer from the Carphone Warehouse, but um, <laughs> thinking about it, that was probably just the Carphone Warehouse offering me a free handset upgrade. Uh, the fifth ball, though, did produce some genuine drama, with Vars sending a text claiming he'd somehow managed to hit it for a ten. No, I imagine McGrath won't be happy with that, though. Ah, well, you're dead right, Gary, because uh, here, here we go. He's just texted a hundred mile an hour bouncer aimed straight at your throat. <laughs> Quick as a flash, though, Vars texts back, I've hooked it ten foot over the long leg boundary, winking face. <laughs> uh, well, now McGrath sent a text saying, the fielder at long leg is nine foot tall, so he's just reached up and caught it. <laughs> Vars replies, but unfortunately your fielder's just touched the boundary rope with one of his massive feet, so I'm afraid it's a six anyway. Sad face. <laughs> and now McGrath texts back with a devastating wit for which Australian cricketers are noted, yeah, well, I've F asterisk pound sign ampersanded your sister. <laughs> Even for the Cricket World Cup, Gary, that is a new low. (laughs) 
These gymnasts are just so bendy. Oh no, as I say that, the young Russian has snapped. <laughs> Well, now, after last week's show, the bosses at Radio 4 told us they wanted more of a tabloid feel. So later on, we'll be presenting Alan Hansen's photo casebook, in which Alan tells us how to beat an offside trap sprung by four ladies in brass. <laughs> uh, but now it's time for our new serial, Shooter, the tabloid football cartoon. Well, here we are at the San Marco Stadium for our Champions League semi-final against Inter Bologna. This is the biggest game in Bradchester United Rovers as is his season. You really need to score a goal shooter, both for the team and for personal reasons. <laughs> Look, everyone, a scantily clad woman. Buongiorno, boys. War! <laughs> uh, that was Shooter. There'll be more from Shooter next week. <laughs> I'm Gary Richardson. You're listening to Look Away Now on Radio 4, the show that's two parts comedy to one part sport, a bit like Britain's Davis Cup team. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, don't be silly. Far too optimistic. Oh, it's in! Uh, it's I'm, in! I'm just going to break off for a second there because, Stan Allen, it sounds like there's been some action over at Scooby-Doo. The gang have just found a secret passage under the carousel. They're creeping along here, Gary. Fred's trying to get a bit of hush. Shush, he says to Daphne. Daphne says shush to Velma. Velma passes that on to Shaggy. Shaggy on to Do. Do to the ghost that's walking back. Zoinks, Gary! Zoinks! It's like a ghost! Uh, Scooby and Scrappy, they're going to make a run for it here, surely? They're trying to make a run for it, Gary. Their legs are whirling round at 100 miles an hour. That they don't actually seem to be going anywhere. Whoa, now they're moving. Oh, too quickly, though, maybe. Yeah, because Shaggy's just tripped and got his head stuck in a clown bucket and Doo's fallen right into a suit of armour. Oh, well, terrific, uh, terrific action there at Scooby-Doo. Now, an interesting bit of information coming through on Popeye the Sailor Man. Good story, this. I'm hearing that, contrary to popular opinion, he doesn't live in a caravan. Uh, he actually lives in a house that overlooks a lake. <laughs> Well, we've had such a good response to our football cartoon shooter that we're now going to broadcast a dramatisation of Wisden's very own cricket cartoon, Bowler. Well, here we are in Derby at the county ground for our LV County Championship fixture against Derbyshire. Yes, this is just one of many seemingly meaningless games in Barsetshire's season. You really need to take a wicket, Bowler, because they're 48 without loss. <laughs> oh, look, everyone, a very well-wrapped-up old man. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's Bowler, not as exciting as Shooter, but more true to life. <laughs> you may have noticed that sportsmen and women are increasingly looking for a second career in the media. Well, Jimmy White started as a pundit at the Crucible this year, though inevitably he didn't get to commentate past the first round. Uh, Matthew Hoggard has become a regular Times journalist, and darts hero Andy the Viking Fordham is now on the radio. Andy Fordham! It's just a stitch. <laughs> You're listening to Ask Andy here on BBC Radio Kent. Now, let's take a caller. Hi, Andy. Uh, I've got a real problem. I'm heavily in debt. I've overstretched myself. How do I get out of it? Yeah, well, don't worry, love. Triple eighteen, double seven, then tops. <laughs> Dave's on the line. Yeah, all right, Andy. It's, uh, look, it's me daughter. She's at the duff. Um, she's only 15. What am I going to do? Drop down for treble 19, single 8, bull. <laughs> uh, next you're caller. What? You're right, Andy. Uh, I don't know what to do about my dance, mate. I'll keep getting to 56, but don't know the best check out from there. The road is long, my friend. <laughs> you must learn to walk where none have walked, to look where none have looked, to follow your senses and not be afraid to learn the hardest lesson. Only then will you truly know the answer. Right. Or you could go single 16, double top. <laughs> Time for the Look Away Now rant line. We ask you to phone in comments about any sporting topic that you thought other listeners might find interesting. But instead, you just sent us this. Oh, look, it's uh, Glenn McGrath here. Uh, yeah, this predictive text thing doesn't let you write swear words. Yeah, I wanted to send a really rude message to Paul Nixon, but what he ended up getting was sips off you ducking yanker. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Uh, hello. Uh, is it just me, or has Steve Ryder started to look a bit like a vampire? <laughs> yes, um, hello there. I'd just like to say that I strongly disagree with your previous caller. Obviously, I have no idea what he or she said, but everyone who rings into these things is an idiot, including me. <laughs> hello, um, hope I've got the right number. 
I think the person who scored a hat-trick in the 1966 World Cup final was C. Jeff Capes. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm just ringing to say that I agree with Sir Alex Ferguson that the Premiership officials did not help Manchester United with their game against AC Milan. For instance, the chief executive, Richard Scudamore, he never once went up for a corner. <laughs> Hello there, look away now. I am an important member of the Nobel Prize Committee, and I am ringing you with a hot tip on the next winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. It's going to be Sam Allardyce. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for those. Our rant line uh, number is similar to another phone-in number, so apologies for those that heard heavy breathing when they got through. That wasn't us. Oh, unbelievable! Now, I think it's the closing stages at Roadrunner. 80 times the Coyote has faced the Roadrunner, 80 times he's lost. Uh, Has the longest losing streak in animation just come to a dramatic end? Andy McMahon. No, the Roadrunner's won it. Wiley Coyote painted a tunnel. On a cliff face. I saw him do it with my own eyes. It was definitely no real tunnel. The roadrunner approached it, doing about a ton, and he ran straight through it, Gary. The coyote was as surprised as anybody. He went up to have a closer look, and just as he peered inside the tunnel he painted, bang! He was run over by a massive train, driven by, you've guessed it, roadrunner. <laughs> well, now I'm, uh, I'm hearing... Uh, I think we're entering the last few minutes over at Scooby-Doo. Stan, what's happening? Yeah, Gary, over the years, people like Yvette Fielding and the Archbishop of Canterbury have been mocked for believing in ghosts. Well, the boot is on the other foot now because the Mystery Gang have captured an actual ghost. That's what I'm looking at, Gary. A real-life ghost. They've got him dressed up in a big net. I'm just watching him now. Velma's heading over to it, probably going to fire off a few verbals, I reckon. Oh, she's actually just grabbing hold of some of the material around its head. She's, she's lifting it. Oh, it's the janitor! Oh, this is on un- Unbelievable, Gary! It was old man with us, the janitor, all along. That is a result that absolutely no one could possibly have predicted. <laughs> oh, that's more like it. Yeah, a dramatic finish to it sounds at Watership Down, Brian Brown. Well, the main rabbit's gone down, Gary, at last. Yeah. His name's Hazel, a woman's name, a man's voice, dead rabbit, good. <laughs> Well, that's just about it for this week. Uh, Next week, it's the start of the badminton horse trials, where it's expected that all the horses will be acquitted. (laughs) I'm Gary Richardson. This is Take That. Because I never really liked sport of any sort. So to combat that feeling, get some cards and get dealing... And try to play a little patience. <laughs> Look Away Now was presented by Gary Richardson with Lawrence Howarth, Dave Lamb, Richie Webb, Miles Jupp, Mario Rosenstock, Mark Evans, and Angela McHale. It was written by the cast, Will Ing, and Tony Roach, with additional material from Danielle Ward, Kieran Quirk, Owen Parker, and Andrew Douglas. The music was by Richie Webb. Look Away Now was produced by Will Saunders. To find out more about the show and get tickets to see it, check out the Radio 4 website. Try to play a little patience, or possibly gin rummy or whist. <laughs> And you can get tickets to see next week's Look Away Now by going to bbc.co.uk slash tickets.